Skateboarding has taken me all over the world and connected me to the global community, opening my eyes, my mind, and my heart along the way. Everyone has a purpose, a calling, and so I continue to go out into the world, reaching out, looking within, and striving to live a meaningful life, every moment and every mile. But I am not a gypsy, a rambler, or a wanderer. I am a family man, a family man. The hardest thing I ever do is when I say goodbye to my family, to my girls. Love you guys. All right, I'll call you tonight sometime. But I'd only be half a man if I didn't heed my calling. Thank you, Lucy. <laughs> and so I go, out into the world, away from my own family, to spend time with other families and other young people in sometimes very far away places, my extended family. It's hard to be away, yet every journey inspires me to keep going. The amazing places I visit and the inspirational people I meet fuel my faith in skateboarding and in humanity. And so I go, knowing that I'm connected to something bigger through skateboarding. In the skateboard world, Brazil is known as a hotbed for raw skateboarding talent. And since the mid-1990s, there has been a steady stream of Brazilian skaters who have come to the United States and have made a great impact on the international and competitive skate scenes. But life within this developing nation of sprawling cities and poverty-stricken population can be hard. And for many, it seems there is limited opportunity to improve one's situation. In countries like this, skateboarding is an answer. You know, skateboarding is a way out. Maybe not out of the actual environment you live in, but in a sense, it's a way to rise above the environment you live in. Because skateboarding enables you to see your world differently. And to approach your world differently. I think that's why so many great skaters have come out of Brazil, because they have learned through the process of riding their skateboard how to rise above their environment. Santos grew up in the town of Poa, located on the outskirts of Sao Paulo, the world's second largest city. In what would be considered a lower class neighborhood back here in the States, Sandro found skateboarding, and as a result, his calling to be proactive and pass on all the positive things skateboarding has brought to his life. Yeah! Here, let me try, let me try.
Is that my family? That's my family. That's my that's my dad. That's my daughter. My wife. Hi there. That's my little son. Hey, how's it going? Hey. That's my sister. My mother. And that's my brother. Nice to meet you all. <laughs> Your neighborhood is a real neighborhood. Yeah. It's not like where I live. Where I live, there's no personality, there's no character. It's just houses and people drive up in their cars and park in their garages and disappear. Hey, this is your little girl right here, right? What's her, what's her name? Brenda. 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 Brenda's a big Mike D fan. Is that right? <laughs> she loves the attitude that you have there. She does? Yeah, she really does. I'll so tell her I said thank you and I'll always remember her. É, ele disse obrigado e nunca vai esquecer dela. As is commonplace in most metropolitan areas, Sao Paulo has a central skate spot where skaters from all over the region gather, the Valle do and Hangabao. Such meeting places are important for any skate scene as they provide a place for skaters to come together share skateboarding, and forge new friendships. I started skating when I was a kid. First close to my home, around my street, then around the schools close to my house, and all the places in my neighborhood that were known by the local skaters. Then one day, a good friend of mine brought me here. I felt the energy, you know? I met a lot of friends here. Friends that still skating, friends that doesn't skate anymore, friends that died. This place turned out to be a special place for us. And as I was a part of the first generation that skated here, it was really hard not to come back. So at least two or three times a week, I come here and I consider it my second home. Why skateboarding? Why did you why did you decide to start skateboarding? Ten years ago, my father was working in a butcher shop and they used to give gifts to the kids for Christmas. Back then, it was just me and my older brother at home. And so two gifts came. One skateboard and one toy car. I opened the packages, I saw the skateboard was for him and the toy was for me. I changed the name tags. I pulled this trick to get the skateboard. It was a toy skateboard, you know? A cheaper skateboard. But to me, at that time, it was the best skateboard in the world. Okay, so you switched the names, you got the skateboard, you discovered this place, you fell in love with skateboarding. What motivated you to start participating in skateboarding and sharing skateboarding and, and teaching skateboarding and really, you know, helping the skate scene here in Brazil grow? Like most other kids, I started skateboarding just for fun. Simply to have fun with my skateboard. Then one day, a group of skaters that I used to hang out with invited me to go to this juvenile institution where kids that committed a crime had to stay. We did a presentation, a skate demo for them. We all got to go home afterwards, but the kids had to stay there. When I got back to my house, which is in a poor area, I realized that a lot of kids in my own neighborhood would end up in bad place. That is when I got the idea to help in some way. And what I had to offer at that time was to go there and teach them how to skate and teach them some life lessons through skateboarding. What makes skateboarding so special that you feel the need to go there and share it, that you feel the need to reach out to other people and try and turn them on to it? I see and I believe that both in life and in skateboarding, we fall and wipe out. In skating, we search to find where the mistake was, correct the position and try it again, until we do it the right way. But a lot of times in life, it's not like that. You fall for the first time and give up. So I started to teach these kids that when you fall, they need to do just like in skateboarding. See where the mistake was, correct the mistake, try it again. But this time, get it right.
That's what I'm teaching them. I don't care if they'll be champion skateboarders. All I care about is that they turn out to be champion citizens. Yeah, you're right. That's <laughs> right. You're right. But not everybody, not everybody can articulate that. Not everybody can communicate that. Not everybody sees that. Even the hardcore skaters, they don't all see that. They don't all understand that. Why you? Why are you the guy? Because skateboarding did this to me and helped me to see this. At one point, I was going down the wrong path. The life of drugs, uh, very close to the crime. If it wasn't for skateboarding, I would have stayed on that path. So if it worked for me, I believe it can work with other kids that have the same origin that I have. I understand. I understand. I, I don't think I was ever close to crime or I didn't do drugs or... But I was empty. You know, I was... I needed something. Something real, you know? Something that'd be productive. Something that I could put my energy into and express myself through. And uh, I was lucky I, I found skateboarding. You're lucky you found skateboarding. And I guess it's guys like us, like you and me, who don't forget that and know how important it is to, you know, pass it on, share it. It's just who we are as skaters. It's like, it's our calling. It's what we have to do. The Foundation for the Well-Being of Minors, also known as FEBEM or CASA, is an institution for kids under the age of 18 who commit a crime. Sentenced from six months to three years, it is here that they pay a social educational penalty to society, studying, receiving vocational training, participating in cultural and sporting activities like music, theater, and skateboarding. Because some of these kids have committed serious crimes, I had my doubts about skateboarding in a youth prison. But they were soon laid to rest by an energetic, passionate group of young men. Boys who had been lost, but now on the path to self-discovery through skateboarding. time you went to the FABEM to teach, to share, what goals did you have in mind? Were you actually trying to teach just tricks or is it just the lifestyle? What are you trying to communicate to, to the kids? Well, initially I went over there to teach some tricks, but I know that in the learning of any trick you need to use power, determination, strength and courage. And these attributes you also use in life. So every time you teach a trick, you can teach a way of living, a different way of living. So I think it's both things. You teach a trick and a life lesson together. Okay, but you started going there on your own for a long time before they actually hired you to come in and teach. So you were doing it just to do it. And then suddenly they, it turned into a program now, right? Yeah, verdade. 
Like, it's true. In the beginning, it was hard because of the background of those kids and myself. They are poor kids. They don't have support to study, no support for food, for living and health. And for me, it was like this too. When I decided to get involved, the only difference between us was that I rode a skateboard and I understood that skateboarding could help in life. So the beginning was hard, when it was all voluntary work. I didn't have money to go. I had to jump train station walls to get the train. It took a lot of hours to get there and I barely ate anything. It took a lot to make it happen. But I was not tired or sad, because what fed me and gave me strength and power was the thought that, through skateboarding, I could give a life lesson and get a smile out of a kid that comes from a sad place and did something sad in his life. We're connected. We're all connected now because we ride skateboards. Without the skateboard, you know, they're just here and I'm just out there. But with the skateboard, we're all together. He said they all happy that you're here. Oh, thank you. Yeah. It's good to be here. Good to be here. Yes. I want to know how many of these guys are going to keep skateboarding after. He wants to know how many of you guys will continue to skate with you here. I want to know how many guys are going to come back in here. <laughs> That's good. That's good. Just Sandro. Just Sandro. You'll be in here. <laughs> What kind of relationships have you formed with these kids? Actually, all of them get out of there at some point. A lot of them I never see again, and some I see around and it seems like they didn't learn their lesson. They're still making the same mistakes. And some get back to work, back to their social life, not connected to skateboarding. And some keep skating. That's what makes me happy. So most of the times, the, the only motivation you can find, I guess, is just looking for that smile, that sense of happiness, even if it's only for that moment. Maybe it doesn't last then, but maybe somewhere in the future they remember. I have a hope for this. And what I tell them is that if they never step on a skateboard again, they should apply this strength, this determination this courage to fall and get up again that they learned from skateboarding to their everyday life. Be it studying, their family, their loving relationship, or even on the job. I think that everything that the skateboard can teach when you apply it to your life, to your day-to-day, -day, you can use all this in all the occasions that I mentioned. Love, family, and work. Despite the distance, despite the different countries we live in and the different cultures, skateboarding unites us. Make us speak the same language. The thinking has to be the same. And what beats inside here beats inside there too. And everything we talk about now, I think the mission is that we don't stop here. The mission continues. There is a lot of work to be done. And until that's done, you can be sure that I will keep at it. All right. All right. Hi. You're crazy, man. <laughs> Sandro is that he's given back. He's given back to the skate scene. He's given back to the skaters in his community and at the FABEM. But it's not like Sandro is a pro skater and accomplished all these great things and now has all this money and abilities to give back. He's given back out of his own heart and soul his time, his energy, he's dedicating to these kids without really anything in return. I think the return is, is that 
he feels like he's a part of something. And he's learned so many great things from skateboarding. He's gained so much from skateboarding. It, where it counts. You know, the real stuff. And he feels there's no other choice but to give it back. What I saw reflected back at me in Sandro makes me feel good about my participation in skateboarding. He referenced me as an influence and an inspiration to him. And if that is the result of the work I've done, then all of my time out on the road is worthwhile. And I can truly say that I am proud of what I've accomplished.